morning and welcome back to Last Cast. You join us today on a still water, it's a big water. Fished it before, I've had some nice pike out. But to be honest, in the last few weeks, four or five weeks, pike fishing's just died. So all the snow melt's gone in, the rivers, the rivers are up, canals are up. Been getting the odd few pike, but not many. But today it looks perfect, nice and calm on here for a change. But the problem again is with all the snow melt coming into it, the water's really cold and it just puts the pike off sometimes. But I have seen a few fish topping. I wanted to fish a couple of pegs further down, but there's some fishing in them, so I've had to fish here. It's a bit deeper down there, and I think the pike are probably down there. But I'll give it a go. I just want to get a bite today, I think. Seems, seems like an age since we've had a bite. A nice. Nice flat spot for my net. And my mat. Make sure you said it before, get these set up first, you don't want to be forgetting. Seems like an age since I've been out fishing. We've got about six hours today, see if we can get one fish out. Big water this, just fishing for one fish today. Obviously a couple more will be a bonus. Seen it this can for a while. There we go. He's plumbed up. I think it's about 25 foot out there. There's a deep channel. I need to get to that, I think. And I might try one in the edge later on. But I reckon they'll probably be in the deep water today. So, that's where I start. Deeper. Again, as as we've said before, when you're doing this, don't put your hooks on and your bait. For your obvious reasons, you don't get snagged on the bottom. about two foot over depth there. Take a bit off and that one's ready to go. Get the other one somewhere near. Tools ready. And 
what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some bare elastic on. Just give it a bit extra hold. All I do is wrap it around it. tightens itself on then just just in case you don't want to be losing too much bit this bit's been defrosted a few times so it does get soft just wrap it around like that you know you do it's pretty tight holds it on. Get that one cast out or do the other rod. About 20 minutes to fall out. I'll feather it down a bit, stop it tangle. Perfect. That was deep here. I didn't want the fish further down, but there's someone in the peg. I need to be that way a bit more, I think. Do it on the next gas. got an idea how deep it was from the other rod a bit of a mess so we look at put an extra few foot on and you can tighten the line up to the floats Take a bit off. There's a few fish topping. I'm pretty sure I'm in the wrong spot. All right, get the trace.
keep an eye on while you're doing this. Again, get some bait, elastic on. You're fishing closer and you don't really need this. Right, the second rod out, let this defrost. I'm going to do on the next cast though, I'm going to put the floats a bit further down. It's not quite as deep, but the floats down. Right, both rods are out. I'm going to sit back and wait and I'll give it 20 minutes. And I'll get some um, oils in. See if I can get some smell about. We're nice and calm and a bit of a ripple on the water now. Right, I've got both floats out defrosting a bit but what I'm going to do when I bring it in to put some oil in I'm going to cast a bit further down a bit deeper down there and I think the pike are probably in the deep water at least it's a nice day for a change the weather's been so bad will we catch pike I'm not too sure it's been hard hard five week right it's been about 20 minutes now. The bait should have defrost. As you can see, the sun is out, and I think it's the first time it's been out in about six weeks. It's nice for the fishermen. I don't think the pike like bright weather, but it is a deep water. We get some oil in, sardine. When you're putting it in, make sure your hand's not in the way. I've said this hundreds of times. You don't want to be injecting yourself with air or oils. Give it a good soaking. Get this one out. We'll fish a bit further up, up the water. A bit better now. I'll move the other one a bit further over. Now, I'm gonna, 
that disappeared then. I think someone hit it on the way down. Unless it's tangled. I'll give it a couple of minutes and then I'll have to bring it in. Something... I'm not sure if it's actually running that. Yeah, I think, I think a fish may have picked it up. No, no, it's tangled. No, there, tangled. Mm. It's not tangled. Yeah, I think a, I think a pike whacked it on the way down. At least I know there's one in the swim. We'll get some more oil in. It's got a bite mark on it. Maybe in the small jack. Interesting. I had that for a while. Yeah, that one's set now. The same with the other. Could have been a big perch. No, there were marks on the fish. Pike usually like, don't drop them though. Must have been a big perch to pick that up. Same again. Hands out of the way, all them juices coming out of the fish. Plus I can't move pegs today. Like on the river you can move about a bit more. On here, just got to stick in one peg. So I've got to try to draw the fish in. It can take a couple of hours sometimes, or all day, or not at all. very close to me. See that one, that one's gone and all. I don't know what's happening here. I think there must be a, a channel and it's dropping into it. I'll recast. If you're never sure, I'll recast. You don't want to be fishing for hours with it on the bottom tangled. And the noise will attract the pike. I see my stop knot. Yeah, perfect. I think I think it's a bit deeper closer in. Uh, so them two are out now again with oil. I'll we'll give it 40 minutes and then I'll just recast. Try to attract some pike into the area. And what you might notice is, I didn't go into it in as much detail last time, but all my tools are near my mat. And the reason for that is you don't want to be, if you get a pike on and then you get it hooked, or you need to get the cutters, you don't want to be reaching to your bag if your hand's stuck to a pike. And we have seen that before, one of his friends was doing it. Fortunately we were there to help him but his hand was stuck to the pike with the hook and his cutters were way up the bank. So one of us had to run up, get the cutters and cut his hand, cut the hook out of his hand. So always have them next to where you go and hook it. Try to get a nice flat area. You can't always get a flat area. Try to get the most even area you can get. You should be okay. Just a waiting game now. So loads of fish topping, but they seem to be all topping further down, which is always the case. The thing with the there's a stream when the when the water's down in summer, the stream runs down in front of me. 
So we're occurring under the water, taking the smell down. So we may draw some pike up, maybe in the wrong swim. It's just been a tough one. We've got about six weeks left pike fishing. And then we'll be on the course fishing again. Yeah, double check bait runners are on. We'll sit back and wait. When the sun's gone down a bit, I'll try to get the camera on the float, see if we can get a run. I think I'm asking a bit much. Right, my line's gone really slack. I think a fish has picked, picked my bait up. Yeah, it's running with it. Give it a few seconds. I haven't took the float under, it's actually running with it. With a strike. Doesn't feel too big. It's a good start. And the strange bite of that, the, I just saw the line go flat. It might be bigger than I thought. I think it's a record breaker. A really strange bite. I didn't, see, I didn't even see a twitch on the float. Just the line just went slack and started coming. Not a bad one. I don't think it's a double. Nice and fat. A good start though. Makes a change, he have got to wait ages. Been about half an hour that. One of the hooks is stuck in the net like they always are. Crazy, lost my bait. I'll sit here, I can see. Nice and easy on hooking that one. Not a bad fish. Don't think it's a double. I think that's the smallest fish I've had out of here. But it's a good start, half an hour. Very strange bite. Not a map there, caught a fish. Yes. First decent one in a few weeks. And off it goes. That may have been the one what um, took, took the bait on the drop. Right, so after that first one, I lost my bait. I have to put another bait, and sometimes you get your bait back. The free offering. Might have been about eight pounds maybe, but not massive. Little fish. No trouble with the bait. Bait elastic. When you've caught one like that, you've got to be serious by yourself. Always keep watching the other float. Now I'll get another bait on them and get cast out again.
Yeah, I'll get this one cast out again in the same spot. Again, I'll have to give this one about 20 minutes to defrost and I'll get some oils in it. Definitely in the deep channel there. I think that's why the bite was weird. Yeah, one of the strangest bites I've had that. I was just watching the float and I just saw the line drop in front of me. And if you notice the all, it was a nice easy one looking because I had all the gear next to the mat. It did wrap itself up a bit in the net. Call them crocodile rolls. A bit of a pain when they do that. The small ones do it, the big ones don't seem to do it. That's a good start. Get one or two out. Should should be a good day. Nice and sun. Well, the fish might be moving up now to get ready to spawn. off the mark, you can relax now. It's always good to get one early. You can, you know, at least you know you've got a video then. I've done it before, we've done plenty of videos and just nothing happens. They are quite hard to make sometimes. Right, back to my coffee. Another good way, another good way to get a bite is start making a coffee. As soon as I start making a coffee, you've got a bit of interest on it. Very strange Scales. Never usually bring these, and that one won't worth weighing. Zero. That could be a kiss of death now. That jinx myself. We get a bit of a bit of oil in this one. This is the new bait, and then I'm going to do the same on the other rod. I'm going to try a bit further down, down the water. Seeing a few bubbles come up down there. I think there's a shoal of bream. Same again. Get it so it's absolutely dripping. I can see the oil slicks coming up and they're going going down the water so it is spreading the smell about it's not a gimmick found it does work oils some some stuff i gimmicks not this it's really good on the river right did that one about 40 minutes maybe an hour thing is when you get a fish on pretty early you think you're in for a bump a day and it just goes dead. I'm pretty sure it was the fish what took when I cast out something took it. It's probably that one. Oh, it dropped it. Cast this one a bit further down. And I might even try down by the tree. Trouble is it's really rocky down there and you get snagged. 
I know where I'm fishing now, it's silt on the bottom, there's no rocks. The pike do come in, attacking the fish, you see them now and again. The roach shoals are out there. I'm coming off that in there a bit. Elastic should hold it on. Right in the sun. Can't see it now. Typical. And I'm dead dead sir. It does gets a lot deeper up, further up there. Both bait runners on. Sit back and wait. Nah, I'm troubled. I can't I can't see it. I have to put a bit of depth on it. Better. You don't want to be struggling seeing your float when you're pike fishing. You don't want to get a deep hooked fish, especially when you're by yourself. Oh, you don't want one in here. I think I've um, come over gun with all my winter gear. Right, I think I've got a bit of activity here. Definitely a fish pulling it out. And we're just about to bring this one in. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like a big one. We wanted that one, it picked it and run with it straight away. Check where my net is, everything's to hand down there. It's actually swimming at the so I haven't seen it yet. about the same size as the other one. I think it's a different one, it's got a different tail. And we just ducked again. We a big fish in the edge there then. I think it was pike, small pike. And this one's well behaved compared to the other. To be honest, they're not massive. I'm happy catching anything. Very strange colours on this one. Like orange. Well, it's just not the same fish. I'll have to be careful with that up. Stuck in the net. The good thing about having the uh, Matt, it's actually going crazy now. The good thing about having the mat, what I was going to say is, next to the water is, and put it straight back. Went a bit crazy that one. It's actually broke the trace. 
I always check that. It snapped the trace that when it did the crocodile ro roll. So I always check before you put it back. Another another one, only a small jack. But better than nothing. Went a bit crazy in the net, as they do. And it swum off to menace the roach. That just shows you the power when they do the spin. That's the way of getting out of snags. And it's actually broke the trace wire when it's span. Which in a way is good because you know if someone loses the tackle on the bottom and the fish can get away. Oh, new trace for that one. Right, got the trace back on, bait back on, and put this one out to defrost, but small point to make out. If you're fishing a natural water like this, use what's in the water, what people are catching. Full of small skimmers and roach. That's the bait I would always use first. If you use smelt, smelt seems to work anywhere. What? I haven't got any today, so it's skimmers and roach, which seem to be working. The only problem is all these, they're all jacks. They're good fun to catch until they start rolling in the net. Just shows the power they have when they roll. That's how they, if they get snagged up somewhere, that's how they'll get out like a crocodile. It's not good when they do it in your net. Fortunately, one of the hooks was stuck in the net. But I had to strike straight away with that one because it, it just took off with the rod. Better than getting deep hooked one. Give that about half an hour now to defrost again. And what I might do, I might get some more oils in this one. Now what I'll do, I'll wait till I bring that one in. Yeah, it definitely wanted that bait. Not been bad so far, that was about an hour after the first one. Time for a coffee. Right, a bit of an update. I fished the margin for about an hour. Had one really close in, one in, in the stream bed here. Nothing. So it's that time of day now where, you know, it just goes dead. I'm not expecting to catch anything, but what I've done is I've cast back out into the deeper water. And I'm just going to leave it there now until, until I go home. Everything's set. Folk coming past and going up and down, it's going to smell. I can see the oil drifting downstream. And I think it's just a waiting game now. But I've had two fish. Can't really complain about that. Everything's set now. It's a trap. Right, another update. Been about another hour now, I've not had a sniff. The sun's gone in now, it's gone cold again. Got two hours left. That'll have a good chance of catching another. Can't be too greedy though, I've had two. We'll get some more oils on. That'll make a bit of noise, attract some pike. There's that time of day when you just go to go off the feed sometimes. Morning and evening. But sometimes you can get them all day. Some more oils in that dripping. I'm gonna cast this one a bit further down. Over it.
there's always a chance. Sometimes you, you can sit all day and watch a fall and you think you're not going to get one. And it only takes a second, bang, your fall has gone. It could be anything from two, three pound to 20. I think that's the thing what keeps us um, coming back to pike fishing. It can be hard at times. Same with any types of fishing. Especially if you're fishing for specimen fish, you're not always going to catch. I've been here a few times, not had a bite all day. I have to bring that back in because I, I saw one of the hooks had come off. Try not to lose the bait. A bit of earth fizzing further out. I'm going to see if I can get further out. Yes, I slipped up. And it's, um, as you see that, that's the, the bait last it kept it. I'd have that on, I've lost a bit. Re hook it. Slide in the tail there, should stop on good. And in the back. A bit messy these, all the scales have come off with the impacts. We're going to put a bit more oil in. About one scale left on this. Don't think the pike will care. best cast in the world. The stop not got caught in one of the eyes. No, I'm, I'll leave it there. It's in a deep, deep patch there. Right, I think I'm going to call it a day. It's been a good, been an okay day. I have two fish. First fish after about 10 minutes, and the other one after about an hour. And then just had nothing after that. And it's your, the usual case with pike fishing. You get a couple of fish and then instead there's only a certain amount of fish to go around. But in hindsight, I should have moved further down, but there's someone in the peg and my hands are tied. I don't think I've got enough on a full video here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another session on where me and Brent Went to a similar water and we got a few fish. But we had the uh, dreaded man flow, so we sort of abandoned it. But I'll add that on to the end of the video and I'll see you next time. Right, uh, welcome back to Last Cast. Uh, we've got here early doors. We're on a, a new water. I haven't fished this one before. Bob's has fished it before and uh, there's some decent fishing here. Um, so we're going to see what we do. I'm fishing roach on one and uh, smelt on the other. We've already plumbed up because we want to get cracking. Bob's is fishing the same two baits, so I'm, I'm taking his lead on it. I apologise in advance because uh, both me and uh, myself, uh, sorry, me and Bob, should I say, are uh, full of the old man flu. So any coughing and spluttering and snorting, then uh, I apologise in advance. But the true professionals we are, we'll struggle through it and uh, we'll see if we can make a good film and get a few uh, nice fish on board. So we're going to get cracking, get them out, and uh, I'll give you updates as the day goes on. But uh, first time for me on this water, which is always exciting when you're fishing in new water. As I say, Bob's has had some out before, but uh, let's, let's get them in and see what it's like. Speak to you soon. Right, we've got baits in. Uh, going to get them defrosted and then uh, get some oil pumped into them. Um, it's a bit like fishing off of, uh, Whitby Pier at the moment, but uh, we're covering this, this half here. So uh, let's see if we can... Uh, get a fish on the bank but once we've uh, got the thing shifting we're going to fish this this morning and then we'll uh, probably switch over and fish the other side later on this after depending on what happens but uh, we'll get cracking and see what we can do for you I'll speak to you soon yeah right Bob's is uh, into something here let's see what we got oh that looks decent do I need to get take your rod over the other side go step hey 
Now step over your rod. Go take it over there. Hey. Well, which rod do you want out? This one. What's it feel like? Oh, no, it's got a reasonable tail on it. Hey. Nice, clean, lean fish. Yeah, you can see it down there. There you go, mate. Oh. The blank is and we're off the mark. Right. Do I hold this? We're off the mark, which is good. Chris and our new uh, unhooking mat, I'll talk you through that later on. Nice fish, that. Well fed. I'm not going to say it, lean clean. Do you see how he's uh, nicely hooked in the scissors there as well? There we go. That's a nice fish. Lo lovely markings on that. Not big, or well, massive should I say, but it's uh, not got a mark on it, fin pin perfect. Nice one mate, <clears throat> hopefully the sign of things to come. Do you want me to drop it back in with the gill? Yeah, closer, closer to the edge isn't it? Do you want me to take it and put it in? Yeah, I'll take it. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Right. Wouldn't normally uh, lift them like that and put them back in manually, but they've just got a bit snagged up. So, uh, put that one back in just because the uh, treble snarled up a little bit in there, but we're off the mark. Right, another quick uh, review for you. Um, unhooking mats. We've, we've used quite a few over the years. If I'm low fishing, I tend to use a small roll-up mat that uh, you've seen on the bottom of my... Uh, uh, sort of fly stroke low vest um, if we're fishing dead bait like this or we're fishing for big fish then use these this is the second one we've had um, grace prowler um, folding beanie mat it's a brilliant piece of kit the other thing that's good with it is that you've got a couple of bits and pieces for you know i suppose you could carry your pliers or whatever you want for unhooking on there um, on both sides but the other nice thing is that they've got the clips that clip it together so what we do is, we, you can then, you've got a bit of a pouch inside, you can chuck all your, in our case, camera gear and unhooking gear and all the rest of it and sort of carry it from that aspect. But the nice thing with these is that they're good and solid. Um, the last one we've had, I mean, we must have had that for a good seven or eight years. Um, it's gone well. Really, in all honesty, there's not a right lot long with it apart from the beans have started to go on it, but they're a good long mat as well. You know, you're not going to catch a pike that doesn't sort of fit onto there. Um, cracking piece of kit uh, on, from that aspect um, got to give it 10 out of 10 uh, purely and simply because we've used it for so many years as I say this is the second one we've had uh, you can see the size there you know it's a good size piece of thing um, good strong clips on it as well so it's also good for carrying your stuff you've got a foam base in there and then beanie sides to stop things rolling off um, I suppose if you wanted to have a kip on it and it was clean, then uh, you could lie on it as well. But uh, from that aspect, ours aren't clean for very long. Um, Grace Prowler, folding beanie mat, strongly recommend it and would give it 10 out of 10. Yeah. Fishing lessons. Fishing lessons. <clears throat> right, we've got some action on this one. Let's make sure it's going somewhere first. It seems to have stopped. No, something messing with it. Well, it feels reasonable. Please don't come off. Yeah. 
I don't think so. Well. I'm not giving it an inch, I want it in. Hey? What do you think? That looks bigger. Yes. You want me to hold it while she get set up on the thing? Is it the same one? Hey? Uh, it might be actually. Right, let's have a look what we've got. It's, uh, is it? Let's see what we have in here. Yeah. <laughs> let's get it unhooked. We're on hookers. It's uh, wrapped itself around, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trace off. Get rid of the cam, get rid of that. And we've got rid of that. go perfect no look at that textbook get rid of those and what we'll do no that one for the camera nice fish gets me out of my blank so we're pleased with that so Brent's a happy boy Let's get it back in. I'd say that looks about late teens, wouldn't you? Thank you, fish. Let's get you back in. Right, that uh, brings to the close of the day. We're, we're going to pack up early, I think, today. We've, uh, we've had uh, you know, a couple of nice fish out from that point of view. Don't think we'll fish it again. Um, main reason being is that Bob's one of the, the the big one that I caught. Bob's has caught that previously, and uh, it sort of demonstrates to us the fact that that's probably top of the food chain and uh, uh, you know main predator. So uh, it's one of those things, personal choice. But we don't like to sort of fish the same spot and catch the same fish time and time again. One, it's not good for the fish because you're stressing it out, and pike don't deal well with stress, uh, as you know. They can uh, you know. Uh, kill them quite quickly from that point of view or they just move um, but also there's there's no point just catching the same fish over and over again so uh, we probably won't fish this one again this year uh, as I say we, we, Bob's has done a couple of sessions on here and uh, it's the first time I've fished it but that looks as though it's probably uh, you know top of the food chain so uh, from, from that aspect it sort of takes off the uh, the excitement uh, from that but we'll uh, get ourselves out in another week's time. Uh, I don't know whether we'll be on a river or on a still and uh, see if we can uh, catch some more big pike for you. So hope you've uh, enjoyed it. If you have, like what you see, then uh, subscribe and we'll uh, see you soon. Take care.